All right. Shall we bow our heads? Father, thank you for your blessings. We thank you for another day and opportunity to study the principles of your word. And we pray for your guidance, the direction of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, we uh, began our discussion yesterday, and uh, we, uh, we found that in order to really understand, we need to know, to understand uh, the plan of salvation, we need to know how God created man and his purpose for man, we need to know the results of the fall, and we need to know what God's purpose is and his plan for restoring man. We discussed man's, the purpose of God in, in creating man. God created man as an animal, a very special animal. And, in fact, an animal who was so special that it was a counterpart of God, which means that God gave him faculties of reason and choice and uh, judgment and uh, a lot of things that the animal world doesn't have, such as imagination, the capacity to, to see the unseen. And so... When God placed man in the garden, man was placed there as the sovereign of the whole garden and would be the sovereign of the whole world. God made man capable of doing on his level the kinds of things God does on his level. Of course, man is not a creator in the immediate sense, but yet man can procreate produce other human beings. Man is, is given artistic abilities to be able to create uh, concepts and, and, uh, and um, visual things and so forth. So man was given tremendous capacity, but man is both an animal and also made in the image of God after his likeness. So, this morning, we're going to pick up with the, uh, the purpose of God and how man was to function. Man's mind was to govern his body. Now, we found yesterday that man was the uh, given sovereignty over all the earth, but his sovereignty begins with his own body. His mind was to control his body. That will be a key, a key theme this morning. The mind control the body. The body is never to control the mind. When God created man perfectly, his mind was complete, absolute control over the body. And we'll find out how God designed that that be in just a moment. But we also want to notice that man was created to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. And this, by the way, is, uh, I'll begin here with a little diagram on the board. Man was designed to be a temple for the Holy Spirit. How that works, we cannot know. Perhaps someday we'll we'll discover the keys and the secrets of that. But we do know a lot of things, and even from the, the things that man has been able to create here, such as television and so forth, you can have a, a, a person on the other side of the world and suddenly see them there and hear them talking. So th th there's, even with physical things, there's able to transfer the form. Now, somehow God is able to communicate with us without our seeing him, without our necessarily feeling anything, but he can commune with us. He can speak to us. Sometimes he speaks to us very loudly, but his preference 
is that he be able to speak quietly to us with a still small voice and we hear and respond. The louder he has to get, the more uh, it indicates a resistance uh, on, on our part. And so he wants us sometimes when we, when we have not been following him, he must speak to us very loudly sometimes. And uh, yet as time goes by, God wants us to tune in so that we become very sensitive and hear. Now, we're going to put on the board a little uh, image here. I hope this one works out pretty good. Sometimes I have to try again because I happen not to have those artistic gifts, at least as far as pen or pencil or paintbrush or whatever, that some people have. <clears throat> But man was created with a large cerebral cortex. All other animals have a brain that is quite different than man's. This is the way man's brain is. The animal world is like this. Do you see the difference? This is the cerebral cortex where man does his thinking. This is the lower brain stem, which is the control center for the autonomic nervous system. Now, most of you will probably remember having studied somewhere in, in school uh, about the autonomic nervous system. And this is a wonderful system that operates automatically, autonomic, without your having to constantly take care of it. Now, it's a great thing because uh, if you didn't have that, you might not be here this morning. Uh, in the first place, uh, your autonomic system has to keep you uh, breathing through the night. It has to uh, wake you up in the morning. It has to prepare you for your meals. As a matter of fact, what happened, this is why we need to have regular meals at regular times. Because the autonomic nervous system is so designed that if you have your meals on a regular basis, it will automatically prepare you for eating. Because, you see, digestion begins in the mouth. If you begin eating and it's not the right time and so forth, your digestion will be not so complete because your digestive processes have to start in the mouth, which means that the, uh, that the gastric juices that are necessary must be in the mouth when your food starts coming in. So almost all kinds of things. When uh, you came here, uh, some of you at least, most of you probably drove. Uh, <clears throat> how much thought were you giving to, to, uh, while you were driving to, to make sure that you stayed on the right side of the line? And uh, were you thinking about that all the way over here? How many were? Well, of course not. Why? Well, because you have trained your, your uh, autonomic nervous system to recognize certain patterns and, there, and, and it will keep you in that unless, well, some strange thing happens to get you out of order, but you don't have trouble staying on the right side of the, of the line and you're not thinking about it, but you do it. The autonomic nervous system is a very, very important thing, but it can get us into all kinds of trouble. And we'll be discussing that this morning. It is urgent that we understand the nature uh, of, the, uh, of the autonomic nervous system, what it is supposed to do and what it's not supposed to do. But this morning, we want to talk about how God created man. 
God created man in such a way that his cerebral cortex would be in control of his uh, lower uh, autonomic nervous system, which is the instinctual part of man. If somebody were to, if, if a rock were suddenly to, to come at you, um, in some cases it may come so much, so quickly you can't see it, but if something is threatening your eye, your eye closes. Now, do you make a decision to close your eye? Oh no, the information doesn't have time to travel to your, uh, uh, to your cerebral cortex and, and send back a, a message. And so your autonomic nervous system takes care of it immediately. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's, it's amazing how much of our life is controlled by the lower nature. But the thing that makes man man is this part of his brain. You see, the animals also have instincts, but their instincts are much, much broader and, and bigger. In fact, basically, animals operate through instinct. Now, it is true that God has given some intelligence to all creatures. But do you realize that if a, an animal functions with the level of intelligence of a two-year-old, we would be amazed. Right? There are things that a little, a little two-year-old uh, has already developed his uh, uh, mental functions in such a way that are so much higher than, than any animal. If an animal functioned on that level, we would say, wow, that, that's something. We'd be recording it in books and so forth. So the difference between man and animal is that man, uh, that the animal operates almost entirely on the basis of instincts. Whereas man operates on the basis of his cerebral cortex which, uh, in which reason, judgment, and will control the lower brain stem. This is what God's plan was. This is God's design. However, it's very interesting that God did not create man to be dependent. To, to be independent. Man was created right from the beginning to be dependent upon the Word of God as, as continually uh, interpreted by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit himself was to guide man's reason and provide the basis for proper judgment so he can make the right decisions, the will. Now, God created man so that the will is the governing power of his whole being and was to keep under control the autonomic nervous system. In other words, the higher brain was designed to control the lower brain. If we want to think, the higher control center and the lower control center. The higher control center has to do with man being made in the image of God. The lower control center has to do with man as an animal. Now, uh, it is so interesting how much of man is like the animal, so much so that many have decided that man is just an animal and can be controlled simply by stimulus and response. We don't have time to, to discuss that, but if, 
the, the theory that some scientists have come up with is that if you could know how to stimulate a person consistently in any way you chose, they would respond completely as you stimulate. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? There's no reason, there's no will. Man appears to be a, 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 a will a creature who exercises a will, but that's just imaginary. This is their thought. That is because man has fallen. Do you realize that when man is not living under the direction of the Holy Spirit, he becomes an animal? To any degree that we operate without. Why? Because God did not con that God did not make man as an independent creature. Man was given freedom. God made man free. But as long as he was dependent, as long as man depended, depends on the Holy Spirit, he is free. But if man is not depending upon the Holy Spirit, he is no longer free. We will, we will touch on this again as we move along. So, God has made man with two distinct centers. And by the way, I need to remember to tell you where to turn your pages and so forth. I'm right now on page 43 and getting ready to go on. Two distinct centers of the brain. I want you to turn now to 46, where we'll be talking about how God communicates through the higher center of the mind. You'll find that about a third of the way down uh, a heading. But God des designed man in such a way as to be in continual communication with him. Now, you who have cell phones, my wife used a cell phone for years and I never have. Uh, I still have her cell phone. She passed away December 30. But I haven't yet started using it. It's a, it's a new equipment. Uh, uh, if I use it, I have to keep charging the battery and uh, I'd have to keep remembering it. You understand what I'm saying? It's home there. But you who have, have a cell phone, the purpose of the cell phone is to be in constant communication, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So you have a cell phone and your uh, husband, your child, your, you know, whoever it is, your loved one has a cell phone. And uh, whenever one of you wants to contact the other, you just uh, punch in a few numbers and, and all of a sudden there you're in communication. Well, God created us in such a way that he doesn't have to punch in the numbers. I don't know how he does it, but God can speak to us at any time. And if, if we are dependent upon him, we will hear and we can respond back. If we're not dependent upon him, we may not hear. Indeed, even if we hear, we may not understand what we, the message, and it may be possible that what we hear alarms us and causes us to think an enemy is jamming the system. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Why is that? Oh, we'll discuss that in a little bit because we're going to be talking about the fall right about now. The changes that took place in man as a result of sin are changes that we need to understand in order to, to function properly. I already mentioned about the temple, but on page 47. Man was to be a living temple, and that temple, uh, the, the mind, was to be the cell phone, if you please. In other words, God could speak at any time to us. 
the body being a temple of the Holy Spirit does not mean that the Holy Spirit is just an, uh, some kind of an essence that can actually live in our bodies. It means that our minds are designed in such a way that we can receive the signals that he gives to us. He intends to signal us continually. This is the way. Walk ye in it. Don't go there. That's the wrong, wrong path. And, and, and teaching us and, and so forth. So, as long as we depend on the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, we are free. But if we ever become independent, what happens? What do you suppose happens? We lose our freedom because we lose contact. You see, man is not, a man in himself is not whole. We are only whole when we are functioning as temples of the Holy Spirit. We are only whole if there have been cell phones at the time when Paul wrote and some of the others, they may have used the cell phone uh, as a means of helping to understand. The body temple is a symbol of how God works to guide and direct man. But when we lose our dependence upon God, then we lose our capacity for freedom. We will touch on that further as we move along. But in the meantime, I'd like to call your attention to page 48. And where it, uh, well, actually, uh, page 47, actually, it begins at the last two lines. From eternal ages, it was God's purpose that every created being, from the bright and holy seraph to what? To man. Now, it doesn't say to the animal world. And by the way, man is an animal, but he is a, so far above that, that that he's in a totally different category. He is the ruler of the world, not the ruled. So, from the bright and holy seraph to man should be a temple for the indwelling of the Creator. Now, she speaks... Later, we, if you're about the fourth line, the love which Christ diffuses through the whole being is a vitalizing power. Every vital part, the brain, the heart, the nerves, it touches with healing power. Ministry of Healing, page 115. Now, isn't that amazing? The Holy Spirit, then, is... His, his very communication with us is the key to, to mental and spiritual health. Do you realize that, that unless a person is in communication and dependence with God, he cannot have proper mental health. He cannot have spiritual health. So, Man is totally dependent upon the one who created him. In him we live and move and have our being. If we are not in continual con connection with him and dependent upon him, which means that we act according to his guidance and directions, Unless we do, we lose our capacity for freedom and we become slaves. And we'll see why that is true. We become slaves to our own lower nature. So instead of 
of reason and judgment and will controlling our lower nature. This is the lower nature and the higher nature. Instead of it being controlled, what happens is that the reverse takes place and the controller, that which is supposed to be controlled, becomes the controller. Our emotions, our, our feelings, our passions begin to control us. And I think all of us have had experience to understand what that means. So, God gave man sovereignty over the whole world, but his sovereignty is dependent upon his dependence upon Christ through the Holy Spirit. Without that dependence, man loses his freedom. You see, man, these, the, these by the way, this has to do with the, with the um, instincts, powerful instincts, by the way. You're not going to miss too many meals without doing something drastic to get to get food you're not going to go too long in the desert before you're going to look for water these are instincts and thank God for them and by the way our instincts are not are, are no longer uh, very dependable because the instincts can get confused when they're not guided and properly directed by a Holy Spirit who helps us with our reason and judgment and, and so forth and controls the lower nature, the instincts can come, become very confused. For instance, a person may get used to overeating and the instinct tells him that you have to have more food more food, more food. Why? Because you taught your instincts to tell you that by overeating. And whatever the issue, uh, for instance, thirst, most people do not drink enough water. Why? They've taught their instincts not to speak to them so loudly and to be quiet because they don't want to drink that much water. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, if you don't drink enough water, you're training your, your impulses to, to, you know, be quiet and let you alone and let you dehydrate without realizing what's happening. Because of that, most people must drink water because they know they need more water. You cannot depend on your thirst to give you adequate signals because otherwise you have trained your, your, uh, your emotion, your, your, uh, trained your uh, signals to, to quiet down, to, to let you uh, proceed without drinking the water. Some people, by the way, almost never drink water. They drink soda pop. They drink this and they drink that. It's amazing that they can continue to live. It's amazing that God has put into the body many different systems to compensate for the damage we're doing. But the fact is that you cannot depend on the instincts for giving you the guidance you need. God has given you a mind. He has given you a, a, a brain. He has given you the uh, opportunity to learn about the needs of the body. And it is our responsibility to act according to the principles that we learn about the body. Now, there was a time when I knew nothing about this business of thirst. I had no idea that you had to drink whether you felt like it or not. And uh, 
Well, I undoubtedly was, had a dehydrated body most of the time. When I discovered it, I decided to begin my day by filling up. And so I drink a quart of water the first thing in the morning. I get the, the hydration going because at night you're going to be uh, not only through urination and, uh, and so forth, but through uh, perspiration, uh, you're going to be uh, dehydrating during the night. That means your water uh, system is going to get lower and lower. And so I drink a large volume in the morning to get, get started. And then I must remember to drink water through the day if I don't have a plan, so I have a, a, a quart container in my bathroom that I fill up in the morning, what does that mean? That that needs to be drunk through the day. If I don't have a plan, first thing you know, I forget all about it. Occasionally, I'll go a whole day and I get to the end of the day and realize because my schedule is different or traveling or something, suddenly realize I have not drunk any water during the day. And that's serious because your whole body system depends on the fluid that you drink in order for you to be healthy and strong. How it, it, it's so amazing that you can even exist without it, but God has given the body other ways of compensating for it, such as drawing water from various sources to try to keep the fluid level from becoming dangerously low so that you become ill. Well, uh, so we have, I want to just re uh, uh, re briefly review. Freedom, God designed that every man be free to make his own choices. He gave him the ability to make choices that would control his lower system. If you make the wrong choices, your, your whole body is going to suffer. And you cannot depend on the body, body because once you start making wrong choices, your body is going to tell you to make wrong choices. You will develop habits that will control you. And you'll have to overcome those habits. So it is that uh, as long as we're dependent upon the Word of God, which instructs reason and gives us the proper understanding to make judgments to act upon through the will. And when this process is the way it should be, then we are we live in spiritual, mental, and moral, and physical health. If we do not, then we suffer uh, and we become slaves in the meantime so that we are now being controlled by an insane. He said, there's no, there's no sanity here. There's no mind here. You, you have trained your mind by your actions, by your habits. You train your, your instinctual processes to operate in a wrong way. And by the way, we're born into this world with a disconnect. So that we have imbalances to start with. We may have time for discussion of that a little bit more later. Uh, time goes by very quickly when we're dealing with issues of this kind. Now, <clears throat> so we have freedom, independence. But that dependence has to be on the Creator. If we're not dependent on the Creator, we will become dependent on our lower nature. There's only one way for us to have control over the lower nature. And that is for us to be under the control of the Creator. And when the Creator is not directing, when we, 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 
We don't choose to listen to that small voice. When we're not listening to that voice and not heeding it, then we automatically come under the control of the powerful instincts. It's just like a, uh, in a circus. You have a, 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 a small, fragile man, man controlling an elephant. And everything goes fine as long as the control between man's mind and the elephant. You see, the elephant is a, an animal which, who was designed to be controlled by man's mind. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? God gave man government and his sovereignty over the whole animal world. God intended that man's mind control this animal first and those animals then. And when the control of this animal is the way it should be, under the direction of the Holy Spirit of God, then man is able to bring under control the animal world itself. Although the animal world has become alienated because of man's sin, in spite of that, if man is, uh, uh, has an understanding of the principles and follows them carefully, man is able to control even great and huge animals, lions and, and, uh, and uh, elephants. I, I suppose bears. I'm not acquainted with any any uh, bears in the, in the zoo that are being controlled. But it's, it's a tremendous. The man is able to do so. But notice those beasts are so powerful they could wipe him out with a single stroke unless he maintains control. They will control. Unless we maintain control over our powerful instincts, which include sexual instincts, all kinds of, of, of instincts, unless those are under the control of a reason that is directed by the Holy Spirit through the Word of God and judgment and a will, the will is given power. So much power, somewhere here I'm not going to turn to it particularly because uh, of time, but, but so much so that Ellen White gives the illustration of the power of the mind uh, over the body. And she speaks of those who are fearful of having a bath lest they be, take a cold. Well, yes, she says that actually happens because the, of the state of man's mind creates turbulence within the body so that the body does not function properly and it probably will, you know, have a problem. Uh, there have been experiments where a person has been blindfolded and uh, told that you've got a hot iron and, and uh, not to worry because it's not, you're not, not planning to touch them and so forth. And, and I've seen this happen, by the way, and then uh, suddenly touch them with a, a piece of ice. And sure enough, a, bo uh, a blister forms. Oh, it's, it's, the mind is powerful, much more powerful than you ever would guess. Uh, I, have, I have read about a little woman, a hundred pound woman lifting a car off from her child couldn't be done. A dozen women couldn't do that. But one woman, when life or death of her child is involved, those powerful uh, uh, instincts that, that come into play. So, it is that God created mind in a most wonderful way. But when man is separated from, from the word of God and no longer dependent on it, 
man's body actually is not merely a slave, but he becomes the habitation of what? Of demons. The habitation of demons. The very system that God developed for the Holy Spirit to continue to control man now becomes the, uh, the citadel uh, and the temple of the, ho of the evil spirits. Satan uses the same mechanisms that God uses. And Ellen White speaks of the fact that it was Satan's purpose to dethrone God. And when he seizes control of man's will, this results in dethroning. Yeah, I'll be just put dethroned. He, his purpose is realized to dethrone God. He then takes control. And through the emotions, notice that God's function is this way. Through reason, judgment, and will controls the instinctual man, which we have to do with the emotions, passions, it's appetites, whatever you, however you may want to speak of them, the appetites of man. When man is no longer under the control of the Holy Spirit, these emotions, these appetites will control. They will demand and the will is captive. It is a slave. Therefore, the will overrides the reason. Under the control of the lower nature, which is now imbalanced because of man's sin and has often misinterprets the signals. You've just had a, a, a large meal and your stomach feels uncomfortable three or four hours later and you say, well, I got, I'm hungry. So you start eating more. Basically, your stomach is probably saying, just let me alone. I've got so much to take care, take care of. I don't know just how I'm going to do it. Don't don't <laughs> load me down. And yet you misinterpret and so you load it down. I, I wish we had time to discuss that a little more fully because there's so much we need to understand about this very thing, about appetite and, and so forth. But I want to call your attention to page 51 where uh, the quotation at the bottom of the page, satanic agents took uh, agencies, took possession of men, the bodies of human beings made for the dwelling place of God became the habitation of demons. The senses, the nerves, the organs of men were worked by supernatural agencies in the indulgence of the vilest lust. The very stamp of demons was impressed upon the countenances of men. Human faces reflected the expressions of the legions of, angel, of evil, legions of evil with which men were possessed. Ministry of Healing, page 142. So, the fact is that when we are not we're either under the control of God and are free because we are under his control. It gives us freedom, freedom from our own passions, freedom from, from intense uh, perversion of appetites. When we're under direction of the Holy Spirit, we're free to do what God tells us to do. But unless we cannot. And I'll tell you, I spoke about my early experience yesterday about the eight years of bondage. You cannot break those that bondage. 
but God can give you freedom. And tomorrow we're going to be dealing more, well, Sunday, not tomorrow. <laughs> we'll be dealing uh, with how God is going to set us free. In fact, Sunday will be our most important day. Um, Ellen White says, and I'm, I'm noticing from uh, the upper part of page 52, the brain nerves which communicate with the uh, entire system are the only medium through which heaven can communicate with man. The, what is the only medium? The brain nerves. Now notice, God intends that and created man in such a way that his higher brain center is capable of controlling the lower. And God designed that the brain nerves that communicate with the entire system, including this system, are designed. It's the only way he can communicate with us. I want you to notice the difference. God uses the brain nerves which center here to communicate and direct the whole system. Satan has the opposite plan. Satan begins here and uses the emotions, the passions, the appetites to control the reason and bring man into bondage. You know what you ought to do. And so many times you've heard it said, you probably said it yourself, I know I should, but, you, you know what I'm saying? I know I shouldn't do this, but, but, but. Why? Because there's no freedom. You cannot obey the, in, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, direction of a reason that is itself chained to a will under the control of appetites. You're a slave. And every addict is a slave. And there's only one way to break that slavery, which we will talk about tomorrow. But I, I want to, before we move on from here, we're still on page 52, I would like to call attention to the fact that right from the beginning, man was given the freedom to choose. Man could choose. Now, in order to develop that freedom and that faculty, God gave two trees. And he gave man the responsibility of making a choice right in the beginning. Our muscles are developed by exercise. And our choice, our willpower, is, ex is developed by exercise. If you keep surrendering the will to your appetites, well, then it will become a slave to the appetites. But if by God's grace you control the lower appetite, uh, the lower nature, by, uh, by the, a reason and will that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. You see, the power of the higher nature has to come through the Holy Spirit. Paul speaks of, uh, uh, in Philippians that, uh, that, that uh, it is God that works in you both to will, you see, both to will and to act upon it, to do. So, unless we're set free by Christ, our, our, our potential is, our ability is, well, it's impossible for us to overcome. We cannot control our lower nature without his help, without his motivation and his power. And I notice the motivation. So many times we know what we should do, but we don't want to do it. We want to follow our appetites. Now, it is only when we restore, which we'll be talking about tomorrow, when this chain is restored so that the Word of God and the Holy Spirit again are directing, where we're depending on God's Word and the Holy Spirit, only then are we empowered. You see, I did not understand this, and I, 
I struggled hard to be good. I wanted to do right. I wanted God's approval, but I could never accomplish it because I did not understand that I was a slave and would continue to be a slave until I learned how to trust God. And this is why righteousness is by what? Faith. We must have faith in God in order to depend on him. And when we have faith and we claim his power, we are empowered to depend on him. Otherwise, we cannot overcome. And we're kind of running ahead a little bit. I see we have just about three minutes. We must accomplish much in those three minutes. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to... Uh, Turn, well, let's, let's take a look at 53, the bottom. Speaking about man, Adam and Eve, they had chosen a ruler who chained them to his cart as captives. Uh, by the way, this is speaking about the days of Christ, the result of, the, of Adam and Eve's choice. They had chosen a ruler who had chained them to his cart as captives. Now you get the picture now of, of a battle that has been fought and the conquering king has taken large numbers of captives and when those olden days they would chain them one to another. One couldn't break away uh, because he was chained to the other and the other. A chained and that chain is chained to a cart or, or a uh, a wagon that pulls everyone along. Now notice, chained as captives to, the, to his car. Bewildered and deceived, they were moving in gloomy procession toward eternal ruin. Satanic agencies were incorporated with men. The bodies of human beings made for the dwelling place of God had become habitation of demons. This is what Christ found when he came here and the majority of mankind rejected Jesus rather than be set free. So they were, they were bound, they were slaves. They could have been, he came to, to give them freedom, setting the captives free, but they rejected it because Satan was able to control their thinking and make them feel that freedom was slavery, and slavery is freedom. So this is insane. Sinners are insane. They cannot think properly because they're controlled by lower natures that are stimulated by evil agencies so that the emotions and so forth, as we were mentioning before, Satan works upon this Part, and that's why he has introduced such things as drugs and alcohol and all of these things in order to use these as a means of, of chaining people so they cannot do what is right. It's time to quit and we are just quite a ways from where we need to be. But that's the way it usually happens. And so we will just close right now. Um, hopefully, we'll make a little better progress next Sunday because there's much to, to deal with. I want you to know that tomorrow, that is Sunday, the keys will be given to you. That is through God's word. The keys. We've talked a little bit about them, but our focus will be on God's plan to restore. We have talked about God's purpose for man and what happened in the fall and then we will be talking about God's plan to restore. Now, I will not be able to cover all that's in this, uh, this uh, portion that is given to you, but you really need to study very carefully from here on and especially I would say to, you know, to page... Uh, in the early 70s um, so that when when we discuss these again your minds will already be primed and prepped shall we bow our heads 
Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for the wonderful way in which you created us. And we thank you that you have a plan for rescuing us from slavery and giving us freedom again, freedom to follow you, freedom to function according to the plan you originally made. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless, and you have a, a blessed Sabbath. I happen to be on my way shortly to, uh, the, uh, the, to the Napa Valley, and we'll be spending the Sabbath there, and I will see you Sunday. And I think we've arranged to have a little change of order so that I won't have to start from there so early. Thank you.